the final part of this five part series, Five Smooth Stones, The Making of a King. And yay, congratulations, you have made it this far. And as a thank you, I want to give you a free gift at the end of this video. So stay tuned. So we're gonna get our final smooth stone this week. And it's the stone of the king, the facing the Goliath. We finally got there. And I'm going to read from 1 Samuel 17. This is our go-to scripture. Uh, verse 40. It says, He took his staff, that's David. He took his staff in his hand and went to the stream to choose five smooth stones, which he kept in a pouch in his shepherd's bag. He had his sling ready as he approached the Philistine, which is Goliath. And over the past four weeks, we have stood with David, collecting our five smooth stones to finally defeat our Goliath. And each stone is a reminder of what true leadership is all about. And for David, they were the making of a king. So this week, facing your Goliath. So whatever your giant looks like, know you need to confront it, else nothing will ever change. And this is where you have to put the last smooth stone into your slingshot, ready to fight the beast, which is Goliath, and say, if you don't pull through, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. And facing your Goliath is not going to be a walk in the park, even though you've got this far. There's still um, going to be intimidation from Goliath that you need to overcome. And because this giant, the giant, whatever you're facing, has been in your life probably for quite a while and it's actually had its own way for quite a while and uh, maybe even years and it's not going to take too kindly to um, you pulling your slingshot back and firing the, your smooth stone straight into the forehead of this guy to take him down so you think you're a leader how i have to confess that when I've had challenges in my leadership, um, I've had to face my own Goliath. And um, it rears its ugly head now and again as I continue to step out into my calling as a leader. And my Goliath's name is self-sabotage. Um, and I do it quite frequently. And I'm learning, I'm learning even now to to not keep doing this to self-sabotage I step out and then I feel like I need to retreat back um, but I need to stand in the confidence that God has called me as a leader and I don't know what you're facing um, but name it name it so you know um, what you're facing and who you're facing um, so you can pray into it and you can ask God for help so it's no accident that the enemy comes onto the battlefield and takes a swing at you with his sword and his spear and his javelin uh, while you're collecting the smooth stones to defeat him. And he'll wound you so badly with his lies and with his accusations that you won't even have the energy to pick up a stone, let alone pull your slingshot back and fire it at the enemy. And once you realise that you are a true leader and start using your leadership gift the enemy will try to intimidate you and David faced that with Goliath because Goliath looks at David and he thinks they've sent a boy and he says in the text in 1 Samuel 17 verses 43 to 44 he says am I a dog that you come to beat me with a stick so David may be very thin um, he says come here and I will feed you to the flesh to the birds of the air and the wild animals of the fields huh. so why you know is De Goliath intimidating David um, and the reason why is your enemy wants the freedom he, wa he wants because the freedom to exercise your gift, this is what I'm saying, the, because the freedom to exercise your gift is what the enemy wants. So the freedom to exercise your leadership gift is what the enemy wants. So David has got to exercise his leadership gift if he's going to defeat Goliath. 
but is he going to let the intimidation stop him? So instead of that big ugly brute named Goliath send you crying home to your mama, as I'm sure David was going, what am I going to do now? You have to learn to fight, but not in your own strength. It's in God's strength. And you have to show him who you are, who God says you are, and more importantly, whose you are, which is God's. And David, he probably did feel the sting of the insults um, that's been hurled his way. And now maybe all he wants to do is curl up in a ball and, and rock back and forth and hold his comfort blanket and go, it's not fair, God. God, it's not fair. I've come this far and yet I'm still being intimidated. I'm still being challenged by this Goliath. What am I going to do? But he doesn't. He says in verse 45, he, this is the making of the king. Because he says, you come to me. You come to me, Goliath, carrying a sword and a spear and a javelin as your weapons. But I come armed with the name of the Eternal One, the commander of heavenly armies, the true God of the armies of Israel, the one you have insulted. And that is the key. He's actually insulted God, not David. David didn't take on that insult. He didn't say, oh, he's having a go at me. No, he's having a go at God who's behind you, ready to go. Because we are dealing with um, the enemy, um, not the Goliath. It's, it's the forces what's behind the intimidation. That's who they're fighting. That's who they're insulting. So don't take it personally. So remind yourself how God helped you through all the other battles. And that's why we have the five smooth stones to remind ourselves. And David needed to remember what each smooth stone represented because this is the part of the story. This is the hinge that all his kingship pivots on. This bit is the making of the king. And as David turned around to face his Goliath, he looked, he probably looked at the five, I mean, I'm using poetic license here, but he could have looked at the five smooth stones that we have been, that I've been teaching you about and he, and he looked at what each one represented. So stone one, stone one. Remember what it was in week one? So I am anointed. You've got, to, you've got to look at your smooth stone and say, I am anointed by God as a leader. So it doesn't matter what anyone else says. If God says you're a leader, then you're a leader. Stone two, stone number two. Well, God help me fight the lion and the bear. So he he's definitely going to help me now. So all the challenges you've been through before, God helped you. He pulled you through. He fought the lion and the bear with you. This was that was training ground. So it's gonna it's gonna pull through on this one with Goliath. And then stone three. Stone three. It was not about the sandwiches, it was about positioning. So the sandwiches were just God's way to position you, you and David in the right place. And then stone four last week was about the armour. And Saul's armour was a test. It was a test to see if you're going to rely on other leaders, on their armour, on what worked for them, or are you going to trust God completely and let him do what he needs to do in your life. Um, and be unique to your calling and now this week stone five with God's help it's now time to face Goliath so when the Philistine stood up and approached David David ran toward the line of the battle to meet him so he's 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 coming in a forward motion so we don't need to be treated we've got to run towards the battle to meet the Goliath and as quick as a flash, he reached into his bag, pulled a stone and put a stone in his slingshot and launched it at the Philistine, hitting him in the head. And then the stone sank deeply into the forehead of the Philistine and he fell face first onto the ground. 
And that's 1 Samuel 17, verse 48. And then David had to, he knocked Goliath out. So he had to then take, he took Goliath's own sword and chopped Goliath's head off. So we were like, yay, when you read the story. So to create the change that we need, we have to engage with our Goliath and embrace the fight. Leaders go first and help others see that there is a way. You imagine all of King Saul's army and King Saul watching David striking this Goliath and then chopping off his head and holding his head up. I mean, the whole army would have erupted in absolute ecstatic celebration because they 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 didn't know how they were going to defeat their Goliath. Yet this shepherd boy, he just came and, and did it um, in God's strength. It was all glory to God. So David had to show King Saul, King Saul's army, and above all else, his older brothers, all the people that had intimidated him up until this point, he had to show them that God carries out great exploits, just like in Daniel eleven thirty two, know their God will carry out great exploits, because you are the leader that God has chosen to defeat this Goliath, and you're going to show people exactly who you are and whose you are so as a leader when you face your goliath remember the five smooth stones of this series and and know that your next move with god it could be the making of a king so that's it for this series and i hope you've really enjoyed this teaching because i've enjoyed teaching you and sharing you with um, David and Goliath which is one of my really it's one of my favorites in the Bible I really um, can see uh, the making of a king all the way through the story and I want to thank you for sticking with me through these past five weeks um, so like I said before at the beginning of this video I'm going to give you a free gift and so just click on the link below uh, to get your free downloadable five smooth stones um, PDF um, it's got a whole heap of content in it for you uh, to remind you uh, what a great leader you are and a great leader you're gonna be if you're just starting out on this leadership um, journey and maybe as you go on your travels why not collect five smooth stones and place them in your house somewhere that's what I do um, to remind you that God has anointed you as a leader and all what you've been through each stone can re represent something different to you uh, your journey is different to David's but but it was a reminder that's what they used to do in Bible times build monuments to remind them of God's grace and God's goodness so number one the stone of confidence so you've got to go in confidence and number two you have fought the lion and the bear that's training so if you can fight the lion and the bear you can fight a goliath and three to know that it's not about the trivial things it's not about the sandwiches it's about positioning positioning is really important in leadership and it gets you where god needs you to be um, and then number four is to say thanks but no thanks when people have alternative motives when they're looking to help you out you've got to discern whether it's going to be beneficial for you or whether it isn't and to pray into that and five finally the five smooth stone to defeat your goliath um, and you can be the making of a king and I know I've talked about kings a lot, but ladies too, the queen, um, the making of a queen too. And I really hope this is set in motion, something that uh, you, can be helpful in your leadership. I hope it stirred you to action and I hope it has benefited you in your journey as a leader. So